what do you do when you're just starting out and don't have a lot of professional experience? Can you just list your college classes? Yes. Okay. So if that's the case where you don't have a lot of experience, absolutely. But you also want to look back on your volunteer experience, any sort of clubs or extracurricular activities that you did in college um, as well in, in order to really round out your resume. Because the, the thing here is that your professional experience section is still a, a very important part of your resume. And if you don't have anything to include on there, it uh, is going to be a little bit tougher for you to, to land those interviews. So you wanna really hone in on, well, what have I done? perhaps even in the classes or outside of the classes from an extracurricular standpoint that I could list down that I could create bullet points for that could describe my skill sets that I bring to the table. Um, and from a course standpoint, I would say, yes, you can list the courses, but actually what's even more helpful is what kinds of assignments and projects, if you're in a science background, let's just say, and you actually did certain lab experiments and you worked on certain uh, trying to resolve certain theories. I mean, I'm not a science person, so I don't know the lingo as well. But uh, if you worked on certain projects and assignments within those courses, then I would take those and include them in your experience section and describe them as if they happened in a work setting, meaning use the same format uh, uh, formulas to write out your bullet points. Uh, and just you're just leveraging the, the projects and assignments that you did in the classes that you took, um, but it, it would be no different than if you did them in a work setting. How do you get noticed when it appears that all entry levels jobs are asking for two or three years experience? I would ignore that. <laughs> you know, when you're a college graduate and you're fresh and you're wanting to find that first job and it's that entry level role, if you know that this is an entry level role, go ahead and apply for it. Do the best that you can using the strategy and, and process that uh, that I shared with you today on your resume and, and apply for it. Don't ignore the one, two, three year requirements because sometimes they just put that on there because to be honest with you, they would ideally love it if somebody had one, two, three years experience. But the truth is someone with three years experience isn't looking necessarily for that entry level role anymore. They're moving on to more of the intermediate, maybe even senior level roles. So you, you're the, you're the best fit for them from that perspective. Just ignore that part of it. And as long as everything else, you can figure out a way to tailor yourself uh, to be a match for, then uh, go ahead and apply. Any tips about writing a resume or profile if you're changing careers? Yes. The biggest thing about, and this is, I've, I've helped people um, to do this successfully, switch from one type of career to another type of career. The biggest thing is understanding what experiences, what skills, what qualifications, what tasks that you've performed that even though it's, a, it's from a completely different job, completely different career, if that new job that you want to apply for, that type of career that you want to apply for still requires those basic types of tasks and responsibilities, then make sure you leverage those and use the language that the new job that you're trying to apply for uses and 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 then you know sort of like just bring that over transfer that over um, for the resume thanks for watching some great advice there hope you found it useful and informative if you're looking for additional guidance on your career journey, click the buttons on the screen to see the next video in the series, or watch the full-length episode for more tips. Both videos are also listed in the description below.